welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I am making a berries and cream soap. It's summer is coming and you know my little fruit trees have mini blossoms on them so I'm loving it. I actually don't have fruit trees. Well I do have fruit trees but the, it's the berry trees that I'm thinking of. My goodness I kind of get segued off in my mind so I'm trying to stay on target here. Berries and cream. Back to the soap. That's the fragrance. From Wholesale Supplies Plus, this smells so good. It's it's not too sweet, and it's got that kind of vanilla kick with the cream smell. Uh, it says it does discolor to tan, so I will probably put a little titanium dioxide in some of the soap batter for the colors. I was thinking of berries, so I am going to use Hollywood Pink, just because that's so bright and vibrant. I don't know if berries really come in that color, but it made me think of berries. And then I have this blackberry from Nurture Soap, which is gorgeous. It's very like a dark plum purple. It's beautiful, like blackberries. So that's gonna go in the color swirl. And if everything's behaving, I have just a little bit of this watermelon punch left over from Nurture Soap. I got this little bag, so I may throw that in there too. And I'm thinking about doing some layers, some piping on top. I just want this to look like a burst of berries and cream, because yum, doesn't that sound good? <laughs> so I will be doing a goat milk and oil method, and I will also be using some heavy cream powder to represent the cream in this soap, and that'll go right in the oils. I'll show you when we get there how to do that. So I still have to go pick out my piping tips and kind of format how I want to do this. It's kind of in my head, so you're coming along with me. You'll see when we get there. Let's make some berries and cream soap. All right, it's additives time uh, for the berries and cream. So let's just start right off here. I've got heavy cream powder that I'm gonna put in here. You know, we're just gonna run with that cream, you know, theme. Um, and I just put a little plastic teaspoon I keep in the bag. I'll do a couple. So they're nice and rounded. So this will probably be about one tablespoon of cream powder total. And then, of course, I've got my wonderful Farm Fresh goat milk that's going to go in here. All right. And my regulars here, which is, of course, my colloidal oats and my kale and clay. And we'll get this all blended in, let it sit and anchor and absorb while I'm waiting for my lye water to cool off. And then we will get to making this soap. And I do have my piping bags all prepped and ready off to the side because I'd like to do some piping on top. And uh, So anyway, let me let this cool, or let the light cool off, get this blended, and then we'll get to soaping. All right, I'm about ready to add my lye solution, which let me just tell you real quick here has about a half a teaspoon of titanium dioxide, cane sugar, tuss of silk fibers, and sodium lactate. That's what's going on over here. And the reason I added the TD is because I went back and just reread the reviews on this berries and cream. Um, and it does discolor. It has 4% vanillin. And I do want the colors to stand out. So the TD, one of the things with adding titanium dioxide is it can accelerate trace. This fragrance has great reviews that it does not accelerate trace, but titanium dioxide will kind of kick things up a little. So that's something to be mindful of. And so with that being said, I have all of my colors predispersed in a little water here. And when I say a little water, it's like half an ounce of water, and I just, I just literally slurry it around in the bottom till I don't see any dry powder left. Um, and I can do that because I always work with a steep water discount. That's just how I like to soap. When you uh, go to a typical soap calculator, the percentage of water to oils is typically 38%. I like to soap at 25% water discount. That's how I roll. Um, so I have a little play time. I have some you know, room to play when I want to add a little water here or the titanium dioxide that's pre-mixed in water. It gives me a little wiggle room. Plus, I just I like to soap with a low water discount. That's just how I roll. Definitely, you don't have to do that. But anyway, that's why I feel very comfortable predispersing my little colors here in water. Um, some people will use the base oils to predisperse their colors, and that works fabulous also. So, you know, there are some hard set rules with soaping, and then there's other areas where you have a little freedom, and that's just something you learn along the way with what kind of works for you. So, anyway, that's how I roll. 
So I am going to hand stir this to emulsion because I have a lot going on here. What I'd like to do is do in the pot swirls, pour one layer with the color and let it set up, then pour another in the pot swirl and then do my piping on top. All of that being said, we're gonna see how this behaves. So I'm gonna hand stir to kind of, you know, keep a good control on the trace going on here. Hopefully everything will behave and not be silly and misbehaving on me because I have a vision in my head. I would love to see it come out on soap. <laughs> and I have my bigger pot here because I made a little bit bigger batch because of the piping and all of that. Um, so when I'm working with a square container, I just have to be sure to get into all the corners. It's, it's not harder to stir, but it's just something you'd be mindful of. A round container, you know, there's no corners to worry about.
it's the next day and I'm anxious to get in here. <laughs> I think we've got some serious color morphing going on, um, but the fragrance did have reviews that said it does change color, so it's a little different, but it's really pretty. Um, I did come in earlier and steam the top just a little to kind of gloss it up. I didn't have soda ash, but it was dull. So anyway, let's get in here. So as I was pouring, I know I broke through that bottom layer, but I kind of wanted to. I wanted it to, um, I'm hoping that it didn't fully mix, but I wanted it to sort of bounce in there and give it a really swirly appearance. So we will see if you can even discern the two layers or not. It's always fun to experiment. So I'm anxious to get in here and see how these colors are looking. This, uh, the fragrance got, um, you know, some reviews saying that the color morphing was interesting. Okay, so there's that. Oh yeah, you can see where it bounced up there. But anyway, that's a pretty slab of soap. I'm anxious to get in here. Let's get to cutting. time to cut these berry cream loaves but can we just talk about the swirls here I love it when that happens so yeah this I'm waiting to see the bars but that's what I was hoping for just where you could see the two different layers but that they would break through and sort of smush so I'm, I'm loving it let's see what we've got going on the inside here that's the real test and oh I forgot to tighten up my strings on Olga. Oh, those are really fun. I think that's really fun inside. I don't know what I was expecting, but I like it. Oh, there, okay. So the colors, um, I'm not seeing any demarcation around there because I did use a good amount of t titanium dioxide. So I don't think that it's going to discolor any more than this. But I think those are cute. I don't know if it's a fruity color or not but it's pretty and uh, they smell good yeah that um, blackberry purple kind of came out almost I don't know it's like a denimish color it's not purple at all it almost has a greenish tinge on the top, so, so that's a little unusual. I was not expecting that color morph, but, you know, it is what it is. They're pretty, they're fun, they're creamy and good. It's all good. All right, let's get to the next loaf. Again, the swirls are just so groovy. Oh, and this side's cool too. I think that's pretty. Loving the side, and that little swirl just tickles me. <laughs> <laughs> 